Hey, what's going Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how I color grade these videos. This specifically right here, this whole setup, this is not what comes straight out of the camera. It looks more like this. And when I color grade it, it looks like this. And I will also be showing you how to color grade using the Loop Deck Plus. This is a product that was recently sent to me. And basically what it does, it, it integrates with your video editor, whether, whether it's Final Cut Pro X, Premiere, and you can adjust the shadows, the mid-tones, the temperature, the saturation with a twist of a knob. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. You can also modify the key so you can speed up the workflow. And I've been using it and I've been liking it. And so I'm gonna show you how it integrates. Uh, but before we get into all the color grading, let's talk about the importance of your camera settings, the uh, lighting and your whole scenario here, what you, what you see that's going on. That's very important. Don't think that you can, you know, just shoot anywhere and get beautiful color grade. There's some circumstances where if the lighting is bad, it doesn't matter what you do in your editing room, you're not gonna really nail the color grade. So start off with the big soft box. I've talked about what I use. There'll be a link, uh, actually a card's popping up here somewhere. You can check it out. Also make sure to do a custom white balance. Always do that in your camera. That way it's easier when you get to the editing room to uh, get straight into color grading instead of having to spend all the time trying to color correct. So, all right, so I think I have a video on doing a custom white balance or I'll link to something if you don't know how to do that. Uh, the next thing is setting exposure. I like to use my external monitor. This is the Andy Cine 4K. I like it because it's pretty inexpensive. It has false colors, which is what you need when you're sitting by yourself. You're not behind the camera, you're in front of the camera. You need to make sure that the IRE values in your false colors sit around 70 IRE. So I found that you know this part of our faces when you have the key light on, the, on one side of your face, the cheek and this side of the nose and right here above here, that's where it gets the brightest just because I, I guess uh, we have peaks in our face. And so you want that to sit ar around 70 IRE. Now this side of my face is darker, so it's not gonna have the 70 IRE. I'm going for this contrasty look, the moody look. Um, so it's fine if it this part side of my face doesn't sit uh, around 70 IRE, but the brightest side should sit around there. If you go to 80 IRE value on your face, it's too bright, you're pushing it, and I don't like to push the highlights too much when it comes to the face. So always prioritize the exposure on the face. Um, so yeah, make sure you got a nice background. I spent uh, quite a bit of time changing up my background and I'm pretty happy with this. So, you know, do something that you like that represents who you are, all right? So I've talked enough. Let's jump over to a computer and I'll show you how I color grade. I went ahead and imported the media, uh, the video I just shot, and this is what it looks like without any color grade. Cinema, Cine 2 Cinema, it's relatively flat, not as flat as S-Log 2, so it's easier to grade. That's why I prefer this profile, okay? So the first thing I like to do is open up my scopes, and I do that by hitting L3. I already customized this keyboard to my liking, and I'm still learning it because it's super powerful. There's a bunch of keys you can modify. Just know that you can actually edit video with it if you if you learn to modify your keys so you can you don't have to rely on the mouse or the keyboard to edit uh, i'm not quite there yet i'm i'm just going to teach you how to color grade using this uh, so if you hit l3 it opens up the scopes i like to look at my vector scope and my histogram whenever i'm color grading now to modify the keys you go up here once you install the loop deck program uh, you go up here you open the setup and you'll see that you can modify this to work with After Effects, Final Cut Pro X, Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, uh, a bunch of programs. So for this, we're using Final Cut Pro. Um, now here's the custom buttons. You hit L1, you click on L1, and you see I set this to be the toggle between the events library browser, uh, which actually it doesn't really toggle. Once you hit L1, it just stays there, and you hit L1 again, it doesn't close it. But with the toggle effects media browser, it does. Uh, this, you know, this is very useful to be able to do that. The toggle video scopes uh, is also awesome. This is something I use a lot. That's why I set it to L3. Uh, then there's these other ones, C1, C2 through C6. And these are ones that I'm gonna be showing you how to use. So this is what I use. If you wanna take a screenshot of this, of, of course, I mean, you can modify it however you like. Uh, then D2 is, there's two other knobs. D1 and D2, 
Right now, I've only modified D2 to be midtones uh, because I'll be using that a lot. Okay, let me hit done. And so I said uh, we want to bring out, bring up the video scopes right away. Let's get to color grading. So I set that to be C4. You see, uh, it should default to color board, but I change it to default to the color reels because I think they're more powerful. And this is what I use for color grading. Okay, let me make the scopes bigger just so we can... Actually, no, this is fine. Um, so I st always start off with the shadows. I look at my waveform and I want this, the lower the waveform to hit almost zero. Um, so, I, you know, I go to my shadows knob and I bring it down here a little bit more, maybe. Boom, it's too much. That's it. And we'll bring out contrast later. I'll show you how to do that. Then the midtones, just to create more contrast, I'm going to bring down just slightly because I'm looking at here, this is my skin right here, sits sits around 65, which is perfect, um, but we can bring it down. Again, I set it to D2, bring it down just a little bit, just a nudge, nudge. And then the highlights, I'm gonna bring down just one bit just to create contrast and bring the midtones down. Now, if you had totally messed up your color temperature, you can always change that with the temperature knob. Again. Make it warm it up or cool it down if I need to. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Just with the twist of a knob, you can modify that. I think I got the, the white balance pretty accurate. You can also change the tint if you're trying to correct for skin tones. Now, that's something I'll talk about uh, later in this video, how to, how to correct for skin tones in case you mess up the uh, color grade. Also, with some LUTs, if you throw on some LUTs, it'll really throw off your skin tones. That's why I don't often use them anymore um, okay the next thing is I'm gonna add further contrast and actually we can add saturation here so there's a saturation knob I'm gonna bring it up until it looks pretty good I think that looks pretty good at this point you know you this image is totally usable but I think it needs a little just a little bit more work um, so what I'm gonna do next is hit the drop down and add the color curves and what i do instead of using a light at this point i just create my own looks using the luma and you can also use these other ones but i don't often touch them because i like to keep it simple so what i do is i create four points one here one here on the midtones and one of the highlights and i start by bringing down the shadows just to bring out more more contrast it's good and i'm gonna bring out bring up the shadows just slightly, that's it. I'm just doing little tweaks. I'm not doing a whole bunch of stuff just to bring up the highlights just a little bit to create that extra contrast. And you can see there, it's just added a little bit more. I can always bring this point down and that's it. I think that's looking pretty good. The next things I'm gonna do is just for style. Um, I'll be looking just at the vector scope. You can see my shirt is blue and my hat has blue on it but it's heading more towards blue. And I want it to be more towards cyan. That way I can create more of like the orange and teal look. So what, how I can do that is if I select L2, it brings up the media effects browser and I select color. And uh, if you select the hue and saturation curves, drop it into your video clip. And let's go in here. And so I'm gonna change the hue of the blue to go towards cyan. So I select this eyedropper where it says here, hue versus hue. I select my shirt, just part of it. And I'm gonna drag this point over towards cyan. If you look at the vector scope right now, we're, get, we're trying to get the blue to move towards cyan. It's not quite there. So I'm gonna add another point over here and move this whole thing towards cyan. I'm not gonna overdo it. I think that's fine right there. I can also add more saturation to the blue if I wanted to, or bring down the luminance. I can always select this and make my shirt darker or the blues darker by bringing the luminance down um, there. I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so if you uncheck it, you can see that the blues moved a little bit more towards cyan. So it's just subtle effects. Uh, the finally, the last thing I like to do is check that my skin tones are accurate. Um, I always finish off by doing that. So if I search for mask, 
draw a mask. I'm going to drop it on my video clip. I'm going to draw it around my face here. Boom. And for this one, you can see the, the exposure is pretty good. 65, that's that's where it should be for my skin tone. Also, it the, my skin is around the skin tone line, but let's make sure we can look at it just the vector scope by itself. Um, here, vector scope. And it's a little bit more on the right-hand side. I think I need to change that. So actually, it's pretty good. I, let's say it was too, my face, my skin was too red. I'm a little bit more olive, so I'm, I think I'm better if my skin tone fight, uh, lies a little bit to the left of the skin tone line. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to add another hue and saturations curve. The hue and saturations curve. This is to fix my skin make it a little bit more olive. Um, I'm going to take the eyedropper where it says here, hue versus hue. I select my skin, just a part of it. And now it's selected my skin. So I'm going to move this more towards orange, take out a little bit of the red, a little bit. There we go. Not too much. Um, just subtle. There you go. Just a little bit. And let's go back. I'm going to select the mask just so we can see the difference. And you see, uh, you can barely tell. Let me close down the scopes. The change is very subtle. I just removed a little bit of the red from my skin just to, just to, so my skin lies a little bit to the left of the skin tone line, just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. I mean, I can always add more contrast or more saturation if I need to. And go back to the color wheels and Let's say maybe add more saturation, take the knob, add more, a little bit more saturation. And overall, I would say this looks pretty good. This is usually what I do. I don't use LUTs. I just, this is just what I'm doing. Um, I don't add, add sharpness anymore. I used to add sharpness, uh, but this is how I just do it. Um, now to, now these clips are not color graded yet. So I'm going to copy the effects. I select this clip and on my keyboard, I select copy and I select my other clips and I select C1 because C1, I set it to be uh, paste all attributes, C1. And now I copied all the effects to my other clips. You see that there now everything's color graded. Now this is pretty much what I do with my color grading. I don't get fancy with LUTs or anything like that. I like to keep it natural and just try to do everything I can with the basic tools that I have. And be, it makes me better at color grading because I'm able to see what I'm doing instead of using a preset or, or a LUT that I don't initially understand what's happening. I'd rather create it myself. Color grading, it's, it's a fine art that I'm still refining, but this is just what I know. Hopefully this will help you out with your own videos. All right, hopefully that was easy enough for you to understand, but if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please drop them down below. I love hearing from you guys. Also, a huge thanks to Loop Deck for sending me this over. It sped up my color grading workflow, especially for Lightroom. Uh, that's another program I use a lot for editing photos and also for the thumbnails for these videos. So if you guys are interested in Lightroom tutorials, I'll be happy to walk you through how I use that program. Uh, so that does it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Here it is.